Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome back to Sunday School. We're back to our some of our online classes, so I'm glad you're here to join us. We're just starting back where we left off. So today, for our lesson, it's called The Effects of the Fall. So this is where God judges sin. So we're going to do a little bit of review from we learned last time, and then we're going to go on. Okay. So first, we're going to start off with a prayer. So today, we're going to start off with a prayers of adoration. We're going to tell God how much we love him. He is the creator of everything. We should praise him for that. So I'll start off and I'll say one and then I'll let you start off and do one as well. I'll start. Here we go. Dear God, I love and adore you because you are always here for me. Thank you for that. Amen. Now it's your turn. I'll start you off again. Dear God, I love and adore you because... Good job. All right, so today we're going to start out by looking at um, how, we'll do a little review, how we learned last year how God created the whole world and everything in it. Then God made people. And do you remember the names of the first two people he created? Good job, Adam and Eve, that's right. So they were a perfect creation before sin corrupted them. Uh, they loved each other, they were happy, the animals in them got along, and all the plants, and they were strong and healthy. Then Adam and Eve sinned. They disobeyed God, and that's what sin is, is when we disobey God. And how did they disobey God? Do you guys remember what they did? Right, they ate from the fruit that they were told not to eat from. Yes, God must have been very sad when Adam and Eve Adam and Eve ate that fruit from the one tree that he told them not to eat from. And when they disobeyed God, sin entered into the world and corrupted God's perfect creation. And who became sinners after that? Just Adam and Eve? Or all of us? Yeah, all of us. We all do it. They were the first people and they sinned and every per uh, person after them is a sinner too. We all make mistakes. We all do things that we're not supposed to. Including me and you. Who else was in the garden that time? Do you remember when Adam and Eve said, who else was there? Right, the snake or the serpent. He was there. Who lied to Adam and Eve, right? And Eve listened to him, and instead of, instead of listening to God, and because sin corrupted the world, God's beautiful creation is not perfect anymore. Life would be complete, would completely change for Adam and Eve. Now, how many of you have been punished for something you have done wrong? I know I have, right? We know our parents don't want us to sin, and God doesn't want us to sin either, does he? The Bible tells us that God is holy, so he must punish all sin. That means God had to punish Adam and Eve. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, but first, God punished the serpent for his part. And I'm going to read a little bit from our Bible today, just to kind of remember our Bible where we hear everything about God. So we're going to go into Genesis, the very first chapter, the very first book of the Bible. And we're going to number th first, uh, chapter 3, verse 14. And it goes, So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. So what do snakes do now when they, when they, when they move around? They crawl on their bellies, right? Kind of down in the dirt, right? Yeah. So, now, then he moved on. God, after he punished the serpent, God moved on to Eve. He had to punish her for her sin too. God said that she would feel, feel pain when she had babies. So here's Eve right here. So now she's going to start to feel a bit of pain. Um... And there was something else. The perfect love between Adam and Eve would not be the same anymore. Now they would both want to lead the, lead the family and what was, that was supposed to be Adam's job. And when two people want to do the, be the boss or be the same, what happens when they both want to do the same thing? I think if your brother or your sister, if you both want to do the same thing at the same time sometimes, and you both want to be the boss, what's going to happen? Right? You're going to fight. So that's what happened with Adam and Eve. They had a hard time getting along. It was more difficult to love each other when we all want to be the leader. So now because of sin, it would be harder for Adam and Eve and all people to love each other the way God wants them to. It's a little harder to do that. We have to work a little harder. Now with Adam here, we'll look at Adam here. 
on our chart. God cursed the ground and made thorns and thistles grow. The Bible said that Adam was working already, but now his work would be a lot harder. And it'd be a little bit more painful for him to do it. He would have to work very hard to grow food for his family. And even to provide, we have to work hard for our families too. Did God create it this way though? No, he didn't. This is part of the punishment for sin. Now, the Bible also sent Adam and Eve out of, uh, sorry, God sent Adam and Eve out of the garden. Because of sin, they could not stay there anymore. Now they would be separated from God, and that's what sin does. It keeps us apart from God. The perfect life they had in the garden was gone. Because of our sin, we all have to have, live, um, live with the same problems. We're going to have pain, hard work, sickness, and death, all because of sin. Now that's really bad news, isn't it? But there's some really good news too, so let's get into that part. Even though we're all sinners, we live in this world that is corrupted because of our sin. God showed that he does love us and he wants us to be with him. Do any of you know how God showed us that he loved us? Who did God send to die on the cross for us? Right, Jesus. Who is Jesus? God's son, right. Yes, God sent Jesus, his only son, to die on the cross for us. Jesus took all the punishment for sin on himself so whoever believes in him will have everlasting life. That's pretty cool. We know, that on, we know that life on earth will end. We know this because of sin. Everything must die. But God promised his life for his children with him forever. Now, who are God's children? Right? We all are God's children. Right? And if we believe in him, he'll give us that beautiful, he'll we'll always be with him. All right, now we are going to look at our some of the stuff we're going to do today. But before we do that, let's do a little game. So in your package, you will have this. And you'll need your mom and dad's help or an older brother and sister to help, okay? I've got some hearts on here, right? And there's a cross on there as well, right? So what I'd like you to do is someone's going to go hide these around the house, okay? And then you're going to have to go find them. After you find them, then you can talk a little bit about what's on here, okay? So that's your job. That's one activity you can do, okay? Now, what does the cross remind us of? Right, Jesus. And what did he do for sinners? He took the punishment away, right? And by finding that and bringing it back, the cross, the heart, we are reminded that God always wants us to come back to him. So it's a little game you can play at home. We still have our Justin and Jesse stories. Let's hear a little bit about them today. So here it is, pokes and prickles. Justin woke up Saturday morning feeling like he wanted to turn over and go right back to sleep. Suddenly he remembered today he was going to help his dad build a fort in the backyard. The fort would be tall like a tower with ladder climbing up and there'd be a slide going out the back door for getting down. There'd also be two swings on the side. Ellie would like that. Justin felt excited. It was going to be great. So he climbed out of bed, he stretched, he got dressed, and headed downstairs for breakfast. His dad was already at the table eating eggs and bacon. Good morning, Justin. Are you ready to get going on the fort today? I sure am. I can't wait to play in it. How long will it take to build? Can I hammer the nails? Can I play in it today? Justin was full of questions. Whoa, said dad. We have some things to take care of first. Oh, like what? Justin asked being a little let down. Well, for one thing, we need to clear all the grass and weeds out of the back corner of the yard. That's what we're going to build. Well, can't we just build on top of the weeds? No, Justin, we need to pull them out. That way they won't creep back in and make a mess. Oh. Justin was, he was tired today. Pulling weeds didn't sound like much fun. He really wanted his fort and he knew the more he helped, the sooner they could build it. Justin and his dad took some garden tools outside. Justin had his very own gloves. They were red and blue with stripes. He usually wore them when he helped mom in the garden. Watch out for these, dad warned as he pointed to the weed that had pokey prickles all over it. These are thistles and they hurt if you touch them. I'll pull those out. You can work on these here. And dad showed Justin a patch of weeds that wouldn't hurt him. Justin got to work. Most of the weeds came out easily, but Justin had to tug really hard on some of them. He even pulled one out that was as tall as he was. He yanked so hard that he landed flat on his bottom and the dirt splattered him in the, splattered him in the face. Whew, this was hard, Justin mumbled 
as he turned to get up when suddenly zing he felt a sting go up his arm oh, 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 oh. he looked down and saw that his arm was right beside a prickly thistle you okay asked dad as he hurried over he looked at justin's arm there was a red splotch right where the, the thistle had poked him it doesn't look too bad let's take a break and put some cream on that they walked to the back porch where justin sat down on the steps he was too dirty to go inside right now, so Mom brought out some of the creamy medicine and gently spread it, spread it on the sore spot. Then she put a bandage over it. Does that feel better, she asked. Yeah, thanks. Can I have something to drink, please? Mom went into the kitchen and brought back lemonade and cookies. Dad, said Justin, how come there's got to be weeds and thistles? Why did God make those? And how come they have to hurt? He turned his arm so that his dad could see his bandage. Well, actually, said Dad, it's because of sin. Huh? I thought Sin was doing something bad. Justin was a little confused. You mean it's bad to pull weeds, he asked? No, no, no. I mean there are things in this world that are here because of sin. Remember how the Bible says Adam and Eve were in God's perfect creation, and then they sinned. Uh-huh. God had to punish that sin, so he cursed the ground and made thorns and thistles grow. Wow, I didn't know that's where that they came from. Yep, that's what the Bible tells us, Dad replied. God also told Adam that he would have to work very hard. He'd have to get rid of the weeds and the thorns so he could grow food for his family. Well, we've been working hard to get rid of them, that's for sure, said Justin, as he held up his empty cup for more lemonade. So what about the other bad stuff, like getting sick? Are they from sin too? Yes, they are, Dad replied. Because of sin, the world is not like God created it to be anymore. Sin changed it. Now there are thorns and thistles and pain and sickness. But how come God just doesn't fix it? He's omnipotent, right? Justin asked. You mean omnipotent? Yes, God is all-powerful. And he will make it all right again at the consummation. The consu- what? What's that? The consummation. That's when God will make a new heaven and a new earth. There won't be sin anymore. There. It'll all be perfect again. And everyone who believes and trusts in Jesus will be there too. Dad said with a big smile. That sounds amazing, said Justin. He looked at the big dirty patch where they were working in the yard. Hey, it's kind of like what we're doing today. We're cleaning out all the weeds and thistles that came from sin and getting rid of them so they don't hurt us anymore. And we're building a brand new fort instead. Well, yeah, I guess it's a little like that. But for now, we have, we have my fort to build, Justin shouted. Yep, said Dad. So let's get to it. And that kind of fits in with what we were talking about, doesn't it? All right, so you all have your, your worksheets to work on. And, and then there's some little coloring sheets too for some of you. If you're in pre-K or if you're in grades two and up, you've got some coloring sheets to go along with that. So I hope you have a great, have fun doing this and we'll see you next week. Bye.